Hello and welcome to Teaching Bio. Today we're going to look at the eighth required practical for AQA level biology, and that is the effect of certain factors on the rate of dehydrogenase activity. Okay, so dehydrogenase is an enzyme that is used to reduce NADP to produce NADPH, okay, and this occurs in the light dependent reaction. So different factors affect the rate of dehydrogenase activity, such as light intensity, and we use DC PIP as a indicator to see the end point of this reaction. So um, if we have a look at the light um, dependent reaction, so this is a chlorophyll molecule. So in the light dependent reaction, light hits the chlorophyll molecule and this excites electrons in the chlorophyll molecule, raising it to a higher energy level. The energy lost from the excited electrons is used to split water into protons and electrons and oxygen. The protons are used to make a proton gradient and the electrons are used to fill sort of the gap in the chlorophyll molecule as these electrons are lost. The electrons then pass down the electron transport chain in a series of oxidation reduction reactions um, via electron carriers. So as electron carriers gain electrons, they become reduced, okay? And as they lose the electrons, they become oxidized. Okay, this is a series of oxidation reduction reactions. Eventually, the electrons re reach a compound um, called NADP. Okay, or well, this one is NADP, and NADP combines with these electrons and protons to form NADPH. Okay, and this is reduced NADP. This reaction is catalyzed by um, the enzyme DC, sorry, by the enzyme dehydrogenase. Okay, so dehydrogenase will work here in order to allow for NADP to become NADPH. Okay, so dehydrogenase enzyme that oxidizes the molecule in order to reduce NADP to produce NADPH. So, in order to investigate the rate of photosynthesis and specifically the rate of um, the light dependent reaction we can look at factors that will affect this enzyme here, okay, marked by an X, the dehydrogenase enzyme. Um, so if obviously we use a high temperature that will denature the enzyme, that means that we will have less NADPH and more NADP, okay, less NADPH, more NADP. Then we can find out certain factors that are, so what, what is the optimum temperature for dehydrogenase? Well, whatever we worked it out to be. However, we can't see this reaction, so in order to see it, we use a compound called DC-PIP, okay? DC-PIP is a compound that is blue when oxidized, okay? However, it is colorless when it's reduced, okay? So it's blue when oxidized and colorless when it's reduced. So when it gains electrons, it becomes colorless. DC-PIP effectively competes with NADP for electrons, so when, it's, so when it gains those electrons, it becomes reduced and it becomes colorless as a result of that. So DC PIP takes the place. Okay, so I'm going to do DC PIP in this pink, pink, pink highlighter. DC PIP effectively takes the place of NADP here. Okay, so it will gain these electrons instead and the proton in order to form um, the reduced DC PIP, which will be colorless. Okay, and that will allow us to see when the end point of the reaction has happened, okay? So if, for example, um, we did this reaction lo looking at the effect of a certain factor on um, dehydrogenase and we found that the test tubes remained blue, okay, that suggests that if they remain blue, that DC PIP has not been reduced, it's still oxidized, so dehydrogenase is not working. However, if instead we did a reaction and the color was colorless, okay, so it's colorless when it's reduced, that implies that DC PIP has effectively competed with NADP for electrons to form reduced DC PIP, therefore dehydrogenase must be working. So that is the sort of context of the practical, okay, and because it's an enzyme, it's effectively the effect of different variables on enzyme action, okay, but this is specific to photosynthesis. So it's things like light intensity, different wavelengths of light, the use of weed killers um, or ammonium hydroxide, which is a type of weed killer, or the use of an inhibitor, okay, something inhibiting um, dehydrogenase, okay, competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition, and also temperature would be another valid factor to consider. Um, so these can be considered, however, because we want to use this to determine the rate of photosynthesis, um, we're using dehydrogenase indirectly, okay? Because by using dehydrogenase, 
if the hydrogenase is working, this suggests that photosynthesis is occurring, okay? And these factors are specific to photosynthesis, okay? Um, so generally we do use these factors, but you, again, you can use temperature and CO2. So common questions that they can ask with this practical are as follows, okay? So question one, the leaf midrib slash leaf stalk is not used in practicals investigating, sorry, involving the rate of dehydrogenase activity suggests two reasons why, okay? So why we would not use the leaf midrib or stalk? Well, there's no chloroplast that are found in the midrib, so there's no point in using the midrib because dehydrogenase will not be present there. This can only happen, this sort of reaction can only happen where there's chlorophyll present, so there'd be no point to the practical. Furthermore, the leaf midrib, um, it's quite tough, so we can't easily homogenize it, okay? So homogenization is a technique used to sort of, um, it's basically a blender, so it's just, we can't blend the leaf midrib because it's very, very difficult, because it's so thick, so um, we avoid using that. And obviously we need to have the smaller fragments to use in the practical. It's just a control experiment to use in investigations involving DC PIP, explain why this is necessary, okay? So a control experiment is done to show that something is only changing because of the variable you added, in this case, because of DC PIP. So in order to show that, we can cover test tubes that we're using this in, in foil, okay? By covering it in foil, that will prevent any light entering. So if light is not entering, then this cannot be happening. Photons of light cannot excite chlorophyll molecules. So foil to prevent light entering. Alternatively, another valid control is to use a tube without chloroplasts, okay? Therefore, there's no chlorophyll. Therefore, there'll be no dehydrogenase because we can't do this. It's all about this reaction here. So how will this be affected? Um, so we can also prevent, but so by doing these things, why does this, this is to explain this is necessary, this effectively prevents excitation of electrons, um, therefore it shows that chloroplast slash light is required for this reaction to occur, okay, for this to occur we need light, we need chloroplasts. Explain how the end point of the reaction for the reaction involving DCP is standardised, why is this an advantage, okay, so the way in which we'd standardise them is to compare this to a colour standard, okay? This is effectively one that has already changed. This is good as it allows us to draw accurate comparisons. So we know that um, DC pit will be colourless when it's reduced, when the reaction has happened. So how do we know what exactly what colourless is? Um, we use a colour standard, okay? So that's the benchmark that we used. We compare it to that one that's already changed so that our comparisons can be accurate, okay? The NA50 value is the concentration of NADP, NADP, needed to inhibit 50% decolorization of DC PIP. Suggest and explain the purpose of calculating NA50 and give one advantage, okay? So why would we look at the inhibition of 50% rather than 100%? Well, the advantage is that we don't have to wait for all DC PIP to decolorize, okay? So it saves time in the practical. And the purpose of this is to show that the, this is the minimum 50% concentration needed to compete sufficiently enough with DCP, okay? So the purpose is to show concentration needed to compete sufficiently enough. And the advantage is that we do not have to wait for all of DC PIP to decolorize so we can do our practical quicker. And again, we can draw comparisons because we're looking at 50% decolorization. Suggest why DC PIP is advantages, okay? So this is a bit more of an obscure question um, as to why it could be an advantage. Well, DC PIP is effectively in here, DC PIP is pink highlighter, is taking the place of NADP, NADP. So if the NADP supply of um, the plant runs out, well, then it can use DC PIP effectively because DC PIP takes the presence of NADP. So when it runs out, it still means that we can continuously keep exciting the electrons in the chlorophyll molecule so that we can still make at least some ATP in the electron transport chain. Um, Next question, ammonium hydroxide mimics the effect of weed killers. Because of this, ammonium hydroxide can be used to investigate the rate of dehydrogenase activity. Suggest why ammonium hydroxide can be used to investigate the rate of dehydrogenase activity. Well, it mimics the effect of weed killers, okay? And you know that that is one of the factors that we can use, okay? So, why can we use ammonium hydroxide to investigate the rate of dehydrogenase activity? Well, if we use ammonium hydroxide, that will prevent plant growth, okay? And therefore prevent photosynthesis um because of the ammonium um ammonium hydroxide is alkaline okay um it has a high ph and that will distort the tertiary structure of the nadp or the carrier proteins or proteins involved in electrotransport chain so because of that there can be no um 
electron transport chain, therefore there can be no ATP, therefore that will effectively kill the plant because we need because plants need ATP for tons of hydrolysis reactions as well as the formation of glucose in the Calvin cycle. So this is a question asked in the June 2017 paper. Chemicals such as weed kills inhibit decolorization DC PIP. Explain why this would de we are, explain why this would slow down the growth of weeds. Okay. So this means that less ATP is produced, less NADPH is produced, and less GP is produced to TP, okay? Therefore, less glucose is produced. Um, so using weed killers will inhibit DC PIP decolorization. So this question was kind of challenging because it effectively is asking, in a way, why DC PIP is good, okay? Um, so using weed killers to inhibit decolorization would be bad because these can't happen. Therefore, DC PIP will allow these things to happen effectively. So question specific to the rate of photosynthesis um, is what can we use to measure the rate of photosynthesis? And this is things like uh, counting the number of oxygen bubbles produced. That will be as a result of photolysis. We can look at the concentration of glucose or starch being produced as a result of the Calvin cycle. Or we can look at the rate of decolorization of DC PIP. The faster the rate of decolorization, the faster it forms a colorless um, solution, the faster the rate of photosynthesis is happening because the faster the rate these are being excited. Okay, so you need to use words like faster and more, okay? It's important to have the faster and not just fast because it needs to all be comparative. Sodium hydrogen carbonate can also be used in practicals looking at photosynthesis, and that is because it is used to maintain a constant carbon dioxide concentration, which will be a factor that will affect photosynthesis. So therefore, this allows for the CO2 concentration to be controlled. 